Well, thank you so much, everybody, for joining um, today. And everybody's got their busy schedules, even though we're in lockdown. But uh, just really excited to be here with all of you. And um, I will, today's agenda is pretty much I want you guys to enjoy yourselves. Um, I'm going to tell you a little bit of the background of how I started my career. Of course, I'm going to show you some beautiful jewelry. And then I will end uh, this Zoom uh, truck show with a bit of a tour um, of my space here in Brooklyn. I am here in Brooklyn. Hopefully we won't see too many protests outside the window, but we have a pretty amazing view from right over here. And of course, I'm gonna share with you about the strength campaign and the strength bracelet, which I'm sure you guys have seen lots about on social media. And of course, um, maybe even have friends or even if you may own one. So I'll talk to you about the inspiration behind that campaign campaign. So my name is Frida Rothman. I was born and raised in the jewelry industry. Um, my family's been in the jewelry industry close to 35 years. My father started his sterling silver business when he was 18 years old. He used to take silver chain in his jacket pocket, get in his car, drive across the country, sell the jewelry, and come back with money in his pocket until he reinvested it and built his company that it was today, that it is today. And uh, I joined um, I started on my own, but using his manufacturing skills, I started by doing private label for other major designers. And I've always been an artist, I've always sketched and painted, and I was working with these other designers that were being sold luxury in, in Bergdorf and Saks, and you know, we, I was doing the manufacturing for them. And over time, um, I found that I was doing a lot of the work for them, a lot of the sketches and a lot of the designs. And uh, my husband kept pushing me to do my own thing. He goes, Frida, you realize you're doing all the work for all of these designers. You can do this, you know, do this for yourself. But, you know, I was the mother of three little kids at the time, and I was really hesitant and really nervous to put myself out there like that. Somehow I feel like women, we tend to do that to ourselves. Um, I didn't have the confidence to do that yet. Um, but my husband really, really believed in me. And I came to work one day, and there was about... $50,000 worth of jewelry displays here in my office with the name Frida Rothman written on it. And he goes, you're now officially the designer of this company. Let's get to work and let's get this thing started. That's kind of how it started with my name being on the brand. Um, and I remember attending my very first jewelry trade show. And I was at the jewelry show and um, I met the Nordstrom buying team. And they saw the collection, they saw all of that mixed metal design work, and they absolutely loved it. They fell in love with the collection. They said it's so different. It's nothing like they have in their stores. And they decided to launch the collection 25 doors. Now, for those that are familiar with the world of retail, it's a slow progression of growth. It's a five door, seven door. It's never a 25 door launch. And they said it was only the second time in the history when they, that they did that. So it was a huge, huge, um, you know, for me, it gave me that extra confidence. I don't know why I didn't believe my husband, I believe Nordstrom, but I felt a lot better when they uh, went into the line. I'm like, okay, I think we got this. I think we actually have a real brand here and, you know, we're really just gonna continue to grow. Um, and the reason, again, the reason they loved it is because I use all of that, that mixed metal, the black and gold. And I know so many of you are familiar with the brand because James and Wilson has been carrying the line for such a long time one of my earlier believers in the brand. Um, and the reason I choose to use a lot of this mixed metal and the black and gold is because the main inspiration for the collection comes from Brooklyn itself. The reason I choose Brooklyn as my inspiration is I was born and raised here. I'm raising my four children here as well. And um, all four of my grandparents were Holocaust survivors. And my to my grandparents, I grew up across the street from my grandparents and they were a huge inspiration in my life. My grandparents taught me what it means to find beauty in places that you wouldn't normally find it, how to bring joy into life, how to, you know, to me, just watching them, the fact that they even got married and had children and raised a family and laughed and joked. I mean, they were survivors of Auschwitz and they went through the harshest periods of time. So I took it upon myself, my mission, is to find places in Brooklyn that are super gritty or places that you wouldn't normally think are sources of inspiration for jewelry. And I try to find inspiration in that and create that into a beautiful piece of jewelry. So during this event, I'm gonna show you some of the pieces, how it inspired me to create a piece of jewelry. My kids and I have this game where we play, like they'll show me something like super gritty and they'd be like, mommy, how are you gonna find inspiration in that? And, you know, it could be a fire hydrant. And I'll say, look at the grooves in that hydrant. Can you imagine making a bracelet with the grooves in the hydrant? And I also think it's so important for them to remain optimistic and to see beauty 
because really in every situation that we're in, we can turn it into something good. So I'm gonna start with the necklace that I'm wearing. Um, this is one of my most iconic pieces from the collection. It's the signature double-sided pendant necklace. This is actually an enhancer. And you'll see a lot of crisscross inspiration in the pieces. This is inspired by the railroad tracks that's right outside my office here in Brooklyn. And of course, using the dark and rhodium. And the reason I love using the dark and rhodium, of course, it's that grit of Brooklyn, but also it really makes the stones pop and you're really able to see that extra sparkle. So this is one side of the pendant and the other side of the pendant was inspired by the manhole covers here in Brooklyn. So I use a black texture on the pendant itself. I don't know if you guys can see that in the camera, but a lot of the workmanship that I use has that textured finish. And of course that gorgeous feminine embellishments on the pendant itself. Now this is an enhancer, it comes on and off. And the chain link, I love a great chunky link, I think it's super cool, is inspired by the link um, gates that we have here in this industrial area in Brooklyn. And again, looking at that, I'm like, I love that those links. How can I make that into a beautiful piece of jewelry? So of course I added these pave links and it has actually a toggle closure in the back, which I'm gonna show you. Keep in mind guys that when you wear a toggle closure, you can wear a toggle in the front or in the back. It doesn't only mean it has to go in the back. Um, and it does come in a darkened uh, rhodium as well. And it comes in a more gold with darkened embellishments. So whenever I'm wearing a pendant, I love to layer it with a longer chain. I kind of think of it as like your framed necklace. Think of the picture frames behind me. As soon as you put a frame around it, it just becomes more prominent and you're really able to see it. So this pendant actually does come, originally it comes just on this longer chain. It's a long chain pendant, about 27 inches long. So it would hit you like right about here. And then always framing my long pendants with a longer chain. Now, I'm sure so many of you, are, you fami are familiar with the long chains. What's really cool about them is that you can double wrap it and you can wear them also as shorter chains. Um, again, it's so great for that layering look. You see so much of that layering look happening right now. And I love that it's really iconic. It's that mixed metal of the black and gold. And whenever you wear jewelry that has more black in it, it will definitely get you more noticed because it has such a gorgeous contrast against the stones and against your skin tone. It just looks really, really beautiful. So love seeing that layered look on, um, on a pendant. Now, I also love these as a short layered look. This is, I love these as gifts. I love these as um, picking graduation or even just your own way of creating a really great layered look right up here. We have our Zoom calls. We want to look good from, we don't want to know what's happening on the bottom part, but we want to know what's happening up here. Um, and I do love these little delicate layers. Um, the, the name of this necklace is actually my daughter's keep stealing. This bezel drop necklace is every time somehow I bring it home for myself, they end up wearing it. Um, it does come in four colorways in the black and white, the all gold, the silver, and it does come in a black and gold too. This is one of our best-selling pendants, which comes in the silver and in the gold. I love that you can just dress, like just wear this for every day and of course build your layers. So really, really pretty um, layered necklace look. Now, for those that are familiar with the brand, you know how much I love stacking bracelets. Um, stacking bracelets is so iconic to who I am and what I do because when it comes to stacking, you can really create your own look. You can create, you know, you can just do, I mean, I'm always like, there's no rules with stacking. Some people are like, you know, can I wear silver with gold or can I wear other designers? Yes and yes. The more you stack, the more different it becomes. So I'm gonna teach you a couple of rules about stacking. First of all, when you're stacking, always stack in odd numbers. It's a lot more appealing to the eye. Um, same way you set your table, you like to set it in odd numbers. Same rule applies for stacking. So we have two ways of stacking. One is an oval hinge. So the oval hinge bracelet tends to fit a lot. I mean, almost every single wrist, if you have a really super skinny wrist or a wide wrist, the oval hinge will fit you. So I'm gonna put it on, kind of show you how that looks. So if you're worried about sizing, go with an oval hinge. Obviously there's plenty of room to slide it over. And of course our wrists are an oval shape. So it really hugs your wrist and it's a great way for stacking. This is one of our best selling stackable bracelets. It's a great starter bracelet and then you can build your stack. I'll kind of show you one over here where I'm mixing color, I'm mixing the strength bracelet, I'm mixing links in here. I do love adding a link into a stack. Again, I think it makes it so different and unique and adding some color here. 
On this bracelet, just so you guys can know, this is part of the spring collection. It's inspired by the cobblestone streets that are right outside my office here. Um, Susan and I, we met in the beginning of the call. When we used to come to work every day in, in heels, trying to walk on cobblestone streets with heels is practically torture. So I'm like, okay, you know what? I'm gonna design a collection with that cobblestone street that we hate so much. Um, so I added the anzanite and the turquoise and of course used that gorgeous black texture on the bracelet itself. It's such a statement piece. You can wear that alone or of course stack these little skinny ones. So these little skinny ones go with every stack. So it doesn't matter if you're buying seasonal or if you're buying spring or summer, all of these little skinny ones, there's a couple of more here that I wanna show you. This, this goes with everything, these little skinny ones and they come in so many different colorways. This you've seen in the collection for many years. It's one of the most uh, symbolic pieces. Some of you are nodding your heads, you might even have it already. Uh, but this is just an outstanding, gorgeous piece with the oval shape. And again, that contrast just makes that bracelet look so, so, so special and so unique. And like I said in the beginning, why Nordstrom was so excited because it's nothing that you have already in your jewelry box. It's different. We got we oh, we hear a cute little baby. <laughs> Susan, we got a mute. So um, another thing I want to show you about stacking is we also have round slide-ons. So I do, I personally love the slide-ons because they're just so easy to take it on and off, but doesn't always fit everybody. So you need to know your size if you're able to wear a, a, a slide on, but there's so many different ways to wear it. You can mix ovals and slide, it's not a problem. But as you build, look how good it looks. You have silver, you have silver and gold, you have some of the black and gold. I'm gonna add some more links. Um, I actually can put them all on at one time. I don't always suggest that you put them all at one shot, but look how cool that looks. And of course, the more you stack, the better it looks. Um, sometimes people say they hear me before they see me with my stacks, but I really just love them. I love this one. Again, I love the space that it makes in the stack. It breaks it up a little bit. Um, also inspired by the cobblestone brick lined streets here. So mixing gold, black and white, black and silver. Um, don't be afraid to mix all of the bracelets. Now I also do, I know I showed you a lot in the gold. Um, I wanna show you a really strong stack in the silver as well. This is gonna be a silver hinged bracelet stack. So for those that wear a lot of silver and you're not used to wearing your gold or you have a lot of pieces from David German, let's say, because I've, I've styled some women who came in with some of those bracelets. This looks so gorgeous because he does use a little bit of oxidation. Just stack them up, make it unique and different. This is a gorgeous more silver. Again, the oval hinge, so you can wear it on any size wrist. So very similar to what I showed you in the beginning, but this is of a more silver color palette. So what if you have a really gorgeous stack and it's all in the black and white or it's all in the black and gold, you already own this. Spring is coming and you want to add some color to your stack. So I love these guys where you can just throw them into your existing stack. Just bring some life, bring some color. And think about also just elevating your everyday look just by adding one of these or even two. It brings so much color to your stack. I just added one little turquoise right here. I love what it did. I love that modern, the bricked um, look of, the, of these oval hinge bracelets and they come in multiple colorways. There is a lapis one right here. Um, which I didn't show you, but there is also in the darker blues, you have the corals. And I also mixed up the colors. So you'll see some mother of pearls, you'll see some corals and turquoises and lots of different colors. So whenever you're wearing color, I prefer to break it up with either something in all gold or something with black. Don't just go like all color crazy. Throw in a few of the darker colors or just an all gold version as well. Now I wanna show you some um, beautiful earrings that are part of the collection too. Uh, these are one of our best-selling hoops. This is the size medium hoop. We actually made this, it was such a strong seller. Again, I, I love that contrast of the mixed metal. You're really able to see that workmanship in the hoop itself. Size medium is the best-selling size, but this is available in size small and large. And this one is so perfect for just everyday wear. I love that it has a little bit of movement to it. It is a hook, and I'm sure all of you guys know that all the jewelry is sterling silver base metal with 14 karat gold embellishments on all of the pieces. 
Now, all of the earring posts are 14K posts for those that are sensitive. And they do come with a larger earring back because we can all use that little lift on our ears. And also, we're always losing those little posts. So really, really beautiful earrings. You can wear this all the time, every day. Um, and love, love the movement on these earrings too. Now I'm thinking spring is in the air. I want to bring some color into my wardrobe. I have a gorgeous classic white shirt. I have, even if it's black, because I'm usually in black, how can I bring some color to what I'm wearing and to really elevate my everyday look? So I love this pendant from the, this is from the spring collection. The spring collection was actually inspired, this was designed a year ago, but interestingly enough, was inspired by the diversity of Brooklyn. I love um, all the different cultures that are here in Brooklyn. It's actually a Sunday activity of mine uh, where I take my kids to different areas in Brooklyn just so you can see and smell all the different um, neighborhoods. Um, so this pendant, um, this collection was inspired by that. So you'll see multiple shapes on the pendant itself. This is a longer chain, so again, we'll hit you right about here. So it is a 27-inch necklace, and framing it with the beautiful, I showed this next to you in the beginning in the black and gold. This is the old gold version, and of course, adding some color. These can be double-wrapped, The beautiful long layer necklaces just to elevate anything that you're wearing. So I'm thinking we're all in these Zoom calls, and we want to add some gorgeous color to our face. We're finally out in the sun a little bit, but I love what these hoops do. Now we all have those classic silver, classic gold hoops, but I think these hoops with color in it are just so much fun. They come in the turquoise, in the white, you have some of these in the coral. Now keep in mind, all of the workmanship is inside and outside. I'm just gonna use this little border so you guys can see it a little bit more clearly. Um, again, just elevating and adding color um, to your face. Over here on accents on jewelry, I would stick with something more all gold or black and gold. I wouldn't go too color crazy, but um, I do love these hoops. Again, just taking a, an everyday classic and making it a little bit more unique. My jewelry is actually always described as classic with a twist. I never want you to look and say, oh my gosh, I can't wear that today, that's too crazy. I want it to be something that you're comfortable wearing that will still get you noticed where it's unique and a little bit different. Um, oh, I'm reading all the comments here. Thank you guys. <laughs> Thank you. Um, now, I also love the soft color palette of the gold. So again, these are gorgeous for spring. It's part of the Celestial Spring Collection. Um, soft matte gold, very feminine, very soft, really beautiful um, collection. I do love that flat cut mother pearl. And of course, this earring, I always love to show when it comes to color, you don't need to take a really, really big earring. But whenever you have color, it adds so, so much to your face. And it's not a huge earring. You just put that turquoise against your face and it's just so, so pretty. So all of these earrings, I wanted to show you different shapes and different sizes. Some are a little bigger, a little smaller. I mean, to me, I have this earring thing. I feel like I'm not fully dressed unless I have a pair of earrings on. Um, but it can really just brightens everything. You know, I, I'm always wearing earrings. One piece of jewelry, I'm never with that. Um, so as much as I love my stacking bracelets, I also love my stacking rings. So this is one of my best-selling stacking rings. It's a five-stack ring. The reason I love stacking, let me get the camera to focus in on this guy. There we go. Um, it's bouncing back and forth. The reason I love these stacking is because you can wear five, you can wear three, you can spread them on your fingers, wear them on different fingers. You don't only have to wear, you know, all five on one finger. Um, but again, just a great contrast of color of the black and gold. Now, this ring here from the Celestial Collection is meant to look like a stack, but it's actually one ring. It's absolutely stunning. It's soldered in the back. Uh, but it's a really strong statement ring. We don't have that many left because it is from spring, but I want to try it on just so I can show you what that looks like. Look how pretty that is. I really love this ring. It's really, really beautiful. And you can see the grooves in that, and that's part of the spring collection with that mixed metal look. And, and Everett, I'll show you one more stack that's also just been selling for years and years, just a really, really good one. It's in that black and white, wear just three, wear five, spread it across your fingers, have fun with the stack. It's so, so pretty. 
um, in that black and white. I love that ring. And within every collection, you'll always see a, a cigar band. A cigar band is very, I love the way that looks. I think you, you cover a lot of ground by wearing a cigar band. And of course, the workmanship is on all sides. So when you open your hand, you see that gorgeous workmanship. It has that crisscross design, uh, the inspiration from Brooklyn itself. And this is more of a pave cigar band with a little more sparkle in that band itself. So you have to play with the lighting. I do shows in the middle of the day, do shows late, later in the day. That depends on the light. Um, but just so you can see how a cigar band fits, because sometimes people are like, oh, how does it feel on my hand? Or can I bend my hand? I'm like crazy with that because I want to make sure that we can put our hands together, we can bend our hands. They're super, super comfortable. So really cool. Again, I want to wave to you. I want you to see that workmanship. I want you to see it on both sides. And I do love a great pointer ring too. Um, okay, now I want to share with you um, this new Radiance collection. Um, Can you show the link bracelet on your arm again? Someone wanted to see the link, the chain link, and also yes. the other finishes that it comes in. Um, yes. So it does come in silver, the platinum rhodium, and the dark rhodium. Yes, I actually wanted to show this one to you. I was going to show it to you in the silver stack. But this is a smaller version of that. This retails at $2.95. It comes in silver and gold. Um, I like that it's not super heavy and it looks gorgeous in a stack. Um, this is a larger one. Um, this, this particular one just comes in the all gold, but this comes in three colorways, all black, all silver, all gold. And of course with the mixed metal pave details on the edge. Um, and then the necklace that I'm wearing right here, is a chunky link. It does come in a bracelet too. So it comes in the mixed metal. You'll have the more gold with touches of black and you'll have more black with touches of gold. So those are probably your chunky link choices. And of course, you can always go to the website and see what other chunky links there are. This is a little bigger and this is a little smaller. I do love this one in a stack. It's a really, really great bracelet. All right, and if I forget anything, Susan, just remind me. So I want to show, share with you the Radiance collection. It's a high polish collection. Um, it doesn't have those matte finishes that I was showing you, but it works so, so well with the matte finishes. Now this collection was inspired by, um, actually my second set of grandparents lived in Williamsburg and where they lived was kind of like the older part of Williamsburg. And it was always fascinating to me to watch that growth of Williamsburg in Brooklyn. Um, my grandparents lived there way before it was cool. And now it's like the coolest place to live in Brooklyn. And to watch these stunning modern buildings come up in these high polishes, and they almost have this like mirror effect. So, I mean, you can clearly see it in, there's a building, it's called 420 Kent in Brooklyn. And it has that gorgeous um, stacked look to it. And it really inspired me to design this high polish sleek, modern, combining the old with the new, um, taking that high polish, I'm going to take some of that away so you can really see what that looks like. Um, but I love stacking these. I love these as gifts. I love these as just stack it with your classic um, matte gold. I mix and match them all the time. I know Susan mixes and matches them all the time as well. And these are all oval hinges. Um, you can also see it on the website how we mix and match the more high polish. Um, but it is meant to be a more modern, mixing the old with the new within the Radiance collection. So a lot of these pieces do come in three colorways, the rose, the silver, and rose, silver, and gold. Um, but love this collection so much. Um, there are really beautiful earrings from this collection too, which I want to share. You can clearly see if you guys have time to look at that building 420 um, Kent, you'll see, you'll literally see that high polish, modern um, face of the building. Interestingly about an oval shaped hoop, oval shape looks good on everybody. You can have a longer face, a rounder face. The oval shaped hoop looks great on everybody. And of course I do love this linear drop with every other disc. Put my little board here. Every uh, second one has a pave um, disc on it too. Yes, that's why it is called the Kent Collection. Very good. <laughs> and there is a stunning, stunning um, ring. Um, I don't know. I've, I've like been obsessed with this ring since it, it arrived. I know I drew it and I sketched it, but it just came out so, so pretty. Um, a cigar band, and it has all of the paves all clear. And you can even see the shine here with just the light on it. This is also part of the Kent Edition Collection. 
but this is a really, really beautiful um, cigar band. And you can wear them with different fingers too. They're really stunning. And this is also part of the Radiance collection. So you can see that here. All right. Um, now I know you guys know that there is um, handbags that I do as well. I'm just gonna give you a little hint of it. But when I decided to launch my bag collection, um, I'm also, I serve as a mentor for young designers. And something that I always tell the young designers is when you're launching a new category or a new collection, what is going to set you apart? Why are you different from the next guy? Why is a buyer going to look at you uh, from all the other beautiful things and beautiful designers that there are out there? So for me, of course, I had to take my own advice. Um, for me, I said, okay, I know I have beautiful jewelry because my husband told me. And I know I have beautiful jewelry and um, I'm gonna add jewelry elements to leather goods. I don't really see that too much. So I work together with my jewelry factory and my factory in India and we put together beautiful, again, classic leathers. You'll see a lot of that crisscross design work, those black and gold embellishments. Now I knew I wanted, I knew what I wanted as far as design. It's always classic with a twist, but I didn't understand how to structurally design a bag or a wallet. And, oh, I'm so happy to hear that, Danielle. And um, I worked together with a designer at, from Samsonite, and she put together the structure of the bag, and I worked on the design of all the leather goods. So this is one of our best-selling bags, too, the little, little maiden bag. I love that you can fit your phone, your credit card. It has that little pocket in the back. I don't know, I keep my driver's license back here. It does come in multiple colorways and it is a crossbody. I'm obsessed with hands-free because I'm always on my phone and I want all my bags. I don't want to be busy holding them. I want them to be hands-free. So this is a gorgeous bag. This is the millennial pink. This is the summer color. And then of course we have the black color and with black embellishments. Now, even on the hardware, I used a matte gold. Again, it goes back to, if you're wearing that stack, it just makes so much sense to wear that together. I'm trying to get that on the screen. But it all just works so well together with those matte hardware. Um, I'm so detail-oriented. I want to make sure that it all just works. So, of course, you can see more bags in the store, and you can always see some more bags online as well. And the same rule applies when I decided to launch eyewear, because there's gorgeous Chanel eyewear. There's so many gorgeous frames. Why are my frames going to be different? What is unique about the frames? And what's unique about the frames is that I designed them all in a matte acetate. The ch that's a good question. Somebody asked if the chain um, is, is heavy. It's actually what I did was, because of that, I added a leather strap on the top. A, because of weight, and B is it's really not comfortable to wear a chain on your shoulder. You don't want to wear that heavy chain. You want to wear leather. So it's really, really not um, a heavy bag. The leather is super light. It's all Italian apple leather. So I want to make sure. I know one of you mentioned that you have the camera bag, even though I was only going to show a hint of it. But this is the camera bag that you are referring to. It's also one of our best selling bags. And it comes in multiple colorways. Yeah. And so with the sunglasses, what I was saying is that I used, again, those matte fan finishes and the matte acetate. Um, again, I'm thinking, what is she wearing? How does she dress? And um, it all just works together. Now, all the frames are hand sketched by me. They are very unique and very different. You're not going to have five other people wearing the same frame as you. The same rule applies for the jewelry, really. It's a very, very unique collection. Um, so I do love these frames. Almost all of the frames come in four different colorways. This is one of our best-selling frames. This is the beacon frame. And I'm going to show you another cool one. I love this little cat eye. I think it's really different and unique and it has this matte finishes on the outside. And of course the matte acetate, very unique and different. I don't think you see this anywhere else. Um, that's why I love it so much because I like to be a little bit different. Um, and then these are kind of like your really um, dear devil kind of frames. Uh, I see some of you ladies wearing this too, but um, it has heavy on the matte finish up there. And you know, I love that I don't need to wear a lot of jewelry or makeup here. It's like you put this on a really great little layered look, two, I mean, three bracelets, and you're good to go. It's a really strong statement pair of sunglasses. Um, so that is the collection. And then I want to talk to you guys about, let me check my timing. I'm right on time. Yes, 
Someone wanted to see inside of the wallet one more time, if you can show that. Yes. So something about um, the interior of the wallets is that they're all leather inside. And I also wanted something that is a lighter color. This is something I learned. I didn't even know this. That the interior of your bag should always be a lighter color or a wallet. Otherwise, you can't find your stuff. So this is interesting. I mean, there's so much space here. Um, so soft and such a great giftable. It comes in the black and it also comes in the lighter color that I showed you before. So, I mean, it comes in beautiful packaging, which I'm going to show you afterwards, but really beautiful wallet. And of course it has the four gorgeous jewelry elements on it. All right, checking to see if I'm missing any messages. Okay, so I want to talk to you guys about this. Um, you guys have everything already. Why am I doing this show? <laughs> um, about the strength race. That I know you don't have. You don't have the strength bracelet. Um, so back in um, November, uh, Susan, who you met uh, as our header brand, and Jermel, I'm sitting with my creative team, and we were talking about, um, you know, female empowerment. It's something that we hear so much about, and especially uh, in, in New York, in the fashion industry, it's, it's a re you know, real topic of discussion. So I remember Susan asked me, Frida, what does female empowerment mean to you? I said, well, guys, you know the answer to that. I'm always going to refer back to my um, grandmothers. My grandmothers are the most empowered women I know. Survivors of Auschwitz rebuilt their lives. I mean, talk about female empowerment. You can speak the language, all of that. Um, and, you know, we started speaking a little more about that topic. And we were talking about how my grandmothers really are women of strength. They really epitomize women of strength. Um, and knowing that my last grandmother passed away about a year ago, we were talking, so wouldn't it be incredible if we can have Holocaust survivors as a face of a campaign of women of strength? Um, and Susan asked me, Frida, do you know any survivors that we can ask something like this of? Are they still alive? Is something we can ask? I said, I actually do. i very good friends with, uh, that I grew up with. Her name is Judy Keller. And um, I grew up with her grandmother and her sister, so it's her great aunt, and they're the most beautiful, beautiful women. Let me call my friend Judy Keller, find out first of all how they're doing, and if she, just to feel her out about this crazy idea that I have. So immediately we, I, they were sitting around the table. I called Judy and I said, Judy, she goes, I, she knows I'm in fashion. I said I have this pretty crazy idea. How would your grandmother, and great aunt, feel about being a face of a campaign of highlighting their strength? As women of strength being face of this incredible campaign and she goes listen I know you have a creative mind um, so do I she's also an artist too she goes I love it but I need to ask my great aunt and see if it's something that she's willing to do I do want to show you a picture of this stunning great aunt that I'm referring to this is um, Dolly Rabinowitz Dolly Rabinowitz is 96 years old in this picture you can clearly see the numbers on her arm here we call her our woman of strength, um, real women, real stories, real heroes. And um, she called her, and this is her grandmother, this is her sister, I want to show you one more picture. Um, this again is Dolly Rabinowitz, and this is her sister Susie Schwartz, who's 104 in this picture and 96 over here. And um, she calls Dolly and she says, you know, you remember my friend Frida, because she knows me since I'm little. She wants to do something, you know, honor you as a woman of strength. Um, what do you think of this idea? She told it to her. She says, it sounds interesting. I don't know. You know what? She tell Frida she should please come and, and, and I get together for lunch with other survivors and let her tell them this idea. And let me see what they have to say. So the two days later, Susan and I pack up. We go down to this area in Brooklyn and we walk into this room and there's about 25 Holocaust survivors sitting around the table having lunch and I was really nervous and anxious and so Dolly introduces me and she says okay tell them what you want to what you want to do what your idea is now at that time I already knew that I wanted to design a bracelet a strength bracelet and a percentage of the proceeds to go back to help the survivors and I started telling them about this idea of course they understood that I was a granddaughter of survivors they felt comfortable with me and um, they were listening and then when I finished speaking they said um, you know what actually is the most amazing thing to us is that there is a young person that wants to have like even is even interested to hear what we have to say and I'm like of course, of course like you are our inspiration and I started going around the room and started to speak to the women and um, this 
first lady that I spoke to was about four foot 11, this tiny little woman, and she holds on to me like right over here. And she starts telling me how when she was nine years old, she was hidden in a cellar for six years. From the age of nine to 15, she was all by herself. And um, she tried to escape and run to the partisans in the woods. And the partisans told her, you know, I'm sorry, but your legs are too short. You need to go back where you came from. And she lived in the back of a farmhouse. So sometimes she got food, sometimes she didn't. Um, and I'm just like looking at her. And um, I, told, I asked her, have you shared your story with anybody? And she says, no, not really. Just really my husband and my kids. I haven't really told the story to anybody. And then the next woman comes over to me and tells me an equally amazing, amazing story. And um, as I'm going around the room, I, Susan and I are looking at all these women. And in my mind, I'm thinking to myself, this is a room full of Anne Franks. They're living among us. They are incredible women. They're smiling. They're laughing. They rebuilt the community um, and taught us everything that we know. They taught us everything that we know about giving back. Um, anyway, we, 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 I you know, finished speaking with all of them, and we came back to the office the very next day. That day was life-changing for the both of us. And um, we came back to the office the very next day and said, we need to do something more. What else can we do for these women? And we decided to host a luncheon here in Brooklyn. So in December, we had close to 55 female Holocaust survivors here in our space. And it was the largest gathering of survivors in 2019. And we literally got it right under the wire because COVID hit. And the entire luncheon was focused on their strength, their joy for life, their, how they give back to the community. And that, that, those are all the things that they taught me. And it was just a very joyous uh, luncheon. And towards the end of the luncheon, I didn't say anything to, to them. These women got up by themselves and just started to dance. It was the most beautiful, beautiful moment. My daughters were here, it was, it was amazing. And um, when they left, I gifted each of them this bracelet, the strength bracelet. And um, it was amazing to see them. Uh, a couple of weeks later, I, I did see them at an event and you saw them wearing this bracelet with the numbers on their arm. And like, this was their, their strength bracelet. So it was a huge honor for me to be a part of that and for them to even wear and to believe in that, in that message. And you know, when I designed the bracelet, I wrote the word strength in the front to kind of give yourself strength. And I also wrote it on the other side to pass strength on to the next person. And the word strength can mean so many different things to so many different people. So for me, the word strength is, you know, I think about my grandmothers and I think about what they went through, but it can mean so many different things for, you know, it can mean somebody that survived something, somebody that is so strong in, in whatever it is that they do every day. And I believe so much in women in our strength, because um, I really look at myself as the mother of four children and how much we do in one day from the minute we wake up to the moment we go to sleep. Um, just a really, really strong message behind this bracelet. And again, it could apply to so many different women and so many different things. Of course, once COVID hit, um, we also have been gifting these to the frontline healthcare workers. And it was amazing to see them in full gear and wearing this uh, strength bracelet. Um, it was a really, really incredible um, message. The strength bracelet, I know some people are asking, it's We've actually sold out three times. Uh, we oversold it. I did not think it was gonna resonate as much. And I did understand that obviously COVID hit, we didn't know that was coming. And that message really, really resonated with so many people. And I think even more so, we just, that, that feeling of strength, it was an amazing Mother's Day gift. A lot of people gifted that as a Mother's Day gift. Um, but even if somebody just needs a message of strength, there's a beautiful card. Um, with, of Dolly's picture that comes in every package. So it shares her story um, of strength. And um, it's a campaign that we want to continue for many, many years. We want to highlight different women of strength throughout the years. We're, we're thinking of highlighting women in the military for the next half of the year. So, because women, you know, as a group are so strong and I really want to highlight those groups that kind of never really get spoken about um, in fashion. So not that they don't get spoken about in fashion. So that's something that we um, are working on. Um, what did I miss, Susan? What, what didn't I speak about? Um, I think I kind of- about the uh, timing of the strength bracelet. So um, we will be receiving our next shipment. Like Frida mentioned, we sold out three times. Um, so they will be shipping next week. Um, so we'll have them in stock next week. 
Yes, and it does come in a silver and a come and more silver and also comes in the more gold the way you, you the way you see me wear it like that. Um, so that is the oh and I want to show you a picture. I want to share with you a picture of the women of strength. Um, this is obviously only six of the 55 women that were here that day. Oh, I did fail to mention two things. First of all is when they came for the luncheon, we had the New York Times here, the Associated Press, NBC News, we had all the major news channels here and they told their story. That was the whole mission of them having this luncheon so their stories should be told and never forgotten. So that was incredible to have them here. And also um, I've stayed in touch with these survivors and um, as part of my company, for every $100 spent, I donate a meal back to the elderly. And not only do I donate, I also actually deliver the food as well. So I don't deliver all the packages, but I've got my neighbors involved, my husband, my kids come with me sometimes, um, of course, mask and gloves. But, uh, you know, they don't love taking, but I love actually giving to them. So it's something that uh, I do as part of my company. And Associated Press actually heard what I was doing. Um, and they asked if they could follow me one day while I was going to deliver food. And I said, absolutely. I mean, I'm sure all of you would do the same thing. I don't know why this is newsworthy, but you absolutely can come along. And they wrote a really, really beautiful article. Susan, if you can share that article in the chat. Um, it was picked up over 300 news outlets. It went international. It was crazy. But for me, it was like my mission was done is that these women's stories were told. It's really, really incredible. I'm really Tremendous honor for me to be a part of it. Um, I also want to show you, oh, and if anybody has time, you can go to my website or to Instagram, and you can actually hear these women's stories and interviews uh, where they talk about, like, I ask them questions like, do you have any advice for the next generation? What can you tell them? And to hear them speak it and to say it is really, really beautiful. Um, all of the pieces of jewelry, I just want to show this, you do come in this gorgeous travel case. You can get it monogrammed with your name on it, um, but I do love this for a really great stack. You can store your earrings, your stack over here. This can come out where you can put your really nice stack in there, and it does come in this box. So if you're thinking to give somebody or even yourself, I love getting a gorgeous box. Um, that pouch comes in, in this box as well. So I'm going to go ahead and join you guys by phone. Um, and give you a virtual tour of the space. I'm glad that it's not dark yet. Uh, let me get the Zoom link and I will join you guys. I'm going to sign off of this one. I um, really have it ready before. Susan, can you quickly WhatsApp me the, the link, please? Sure. Thank you. Okay, send. Mm -hmm. send it. Perfect. Here we go. Okay. Let me move this one. All right, you guys can see me? Okay, so I'm going to flip the camera around. Pretty much where I was sitting was my office. And I'm going to flip the camera around so you guys can see the space. So when we moved into the space, um, it was exactly that grit to glam moment. It was a completely empty room. There was nothing here. There was exposed beams. There was gray floors. Um, and we completely, I saw the beauty in this space. Um, this building is here dating back from the late 1800s. And we completely transformed the space. Um, this is our conference room area. Um, here's a picture of my grandparents. I always make sure to have this picture because it's so important for me to know where I came from and to appreciate all the good things I have in my life and all the hardships they went through so I have the life uh, that I have today. Um, there's the picture of Dolly and Susie and another picture of my maternal grandparents. And back there are some more offices. 
That's my husband's office. And of course, my favorite part is the beautiful, beautiful view of um, New York City. So here you can see the skyline of New York, right here. Um, and then to your left, you can, to your far left, you can see the Statue of Liberty. You can see Lady Liberty down there. And then a lot of the, um, this whole open sp space, these are all government uh, vehicles. This was all set up for COVID. Thank God there's a lot, lot less vehicles now. We had military here. We had, it was really, really busy area. But glad to say that that has been cleaned up. Now down there to your right, this is kind of what my building looks like from the outside. This area is called Industry City. These buildings are, uh, again, was a very, and still is a very industrial part of Brooklyn. You can see the smokestacks down there. All the way down uh, to the right is a federal prison. That's actually their protest happening there as we speak, uh, right in the front. And then um, the train tracks are what you see, it's so clear today, um, is what you see a lot of that crisscross design. These train tracks go all the way down a couple of miles down and that has inspired a lot of the crisscross work that you see. And there are the cobblestone streets that I was referring to earlier um, in the call as well that inspired a lot of the pieces too. Uh, let me just turn this around. And that is, that's my office right there where I was doing the trunk show and that's kind of the entry entryway. And of course more offices hopefully will be back very, very soon. I'm hoping that happens Soon. Let me flip this back around. There we go. So does anybody have any questions or comments? Let me see, where's my comment section? I guess I'll see it pop up. Susan, am I missing any questions? No, I think we... Oh, there we go. Okay, do I sketch before I work? Yes, every single piece is hand sketched. I thought I had one on my desk, but I don't see it now. My husband sometimes cleans my desk. I said, there's a method to my madness. But I did have a sketch on my desk. Every single item is hand sketched by me. It takes me time to get into that mode. Uh, I have to be like in a certain mode. And then once I start sketching, when I have an inspiration or an idea, it just like goes fast. I'm actually, I haven't shown this to anyone yet, but it's, it's in front of me, so I'll just show it to you. But this is kind of a sneak peek into fall. Um, I usually do a silver and, and, and um, black, but when I do it, it's like once I have the idea, it just really, really, really flows easily. Like this is some of the pieces too. But um, I have to just get the idea and the concept in mind, and then I sketch the entire collection in one sitting, and then I submit it. But um, the seasonal pieces retire basically is whatever I showed you from signature. So anything that's really iconic to the brand in that black and gold will live for a long time. Anything that I showed you with color or spring collection, it, it's really pretty much like fashion. You know, if you don't buy it that season, it's gone. You can't get it again. We don't produce it again. I just do it one time. So it's just for that season. I want to make it special. I want to make it one of a kind. I don't want to overproduce. So that, that happens four times a year. So if you saw anything from spring that you liked, this is the last run. We're not going to have it again. So same rule applies for all the seasonals. All right. It looks like I answered all of your questions. I just want to thank, okay, how am I reacting to the feeling about fashion industry? Oh my God, I don't know what's going to be. I read, <laughs> I read the women's wear daily every day, and I don't know. It's funny because I, you know, my my daughter, who's 15, was telling me like, oh, I wouldn't be caught dead with anything like Gucci or whatever. There's like this whole anti-fashion with the kids. I, I don't know, but um, you know, anything like really big brand, which is interesting. But I think we're all going to bounce back, and um, I mean, listen. That's how I was raised. Everything, it's a, it's a famous saying that I say here at work, it's all good. It's all good, everything's gonna be good. I try not to think negatively or what's gonna happen. I just focus on what's right in front of me and of course think about my future, but just I just do my job, I stay focused and trying to make you know the beautiful jewelry and make the customer experience fantastic and just stay focused on you know what my mission is at hand. 
otherwise forget it you know i could just be nervous and, and scared and but really really i'm just so grateful for whatever i do have and just stay optimistic if my business is where it needs to be no but it's fine we'll be fine it's it, it happens so again i always go back to my grandparents so you know if they survived and they built the family it's, it's gonna be fine everything's gonna be good what am i missing Ooh. all right just wait for a couple more questions thank you so much thank you guys for taking the time out um i hope i was it wasn't really my inspiration it was really the incredible women of strength and uh, i really really look forward to coming out there and seeing all of you in person um and uh hopefully everybody stays safe and there will be peace in the world very very soon thank you so much